there are five core principles of economics. First two are people respond to incentives and resources are scarce. The third foundation principle on which we are going to build the rest of your understanding of economics is real values matter. It is relative prices that guide decision making. Let us say that Tisha gets a pay increase. How can we understand the real value of that? A real value is what you is the actual services that you get from an asset like shelter if it's a case of a house or transportation if it's a car those are real assets because they deliver an actual service to you a nominal asset doesn't necessarily directly deliver a service you only know the value you only know the real value of a nominal asset like an amount of money when you know what you can exchange it for a nominal value is worth only its, its, its exchange value a real value you know it's worth intrinsically because of the service it delivers So the amount of your paycheck is a nominal value. A basket of groceries is a real value. But we can express nominal values in terms of its real equivalent by converting the nominal value to what it can be exchanged for. So if Tisha's salary was $100,000 a month in 2019 and a particular basket of groceries costs $20,000 in 2019, then we could say that her salary in 2019 was the equivalent of five baskets. If her salary went up, if her nominal salary went up to $108,000 a month in 2020, but the cost of that same basket of groceries in 2020 went up to $27,000, then her salary in 2020 is the equivalent of only four baskets. So we would say that her salary in money is nominal. Her salary in terms of its real equivalence is real. Note that because of inflation in prices, even though her nominal salary went up, her real salary went down. So when we ask what's the real value of some nominal amount, what we're really asking is what is its equivalence in terms of some other real asset any nominal value therefore can be expressed in real terms that is represented in terms of quantities of commodities what is the real price of a bottle of pepsi If your answer is the price that is stickered on the bottle, then that's incorrect because that's the nominal price. But if we say that with what you pay for a bottle of soda, you could pay for, you could pay for sufficient credit to make 20 calls on your cell phone, then you could say the real price of a bottle of Pepsi is 20 phone calls. 
if to buy a bottle of Pepsi, when you work out your salary in terms of minutes of work that you have to work in order to earn the $150 to buy the soda. And therefore you answer the question, the real price of a bottle of Pepsi is 23 minutes of work. That's also a valid answer to the question, what is the real price? Or it's the equivalent of 1% of the grocery basket. So any measure that compares the nominal price to the nominal price of other goods and services, and therefore establishes the relative price of one in terms of the other, is a way of establishing the real price of a good. This nominal real distinction is important in economics and is going to come up time and time again in the course. In 2020, the economy would have produced a range of goods and services. Those goods and services traded at particular prices. So if we multiply the prices by the quantity, by the quantities of each of those goods and services, we get a measure of the economy's total output. The term we use for the total output of an economy is gross domestic product or GDP. In 2021, the economy would produce a different lot of those goods and services, more of some, less of some, and perhaps even some new ones it didn't produce in, in, in the year before. Those goods and services, because of price changes, may sell at different prices than they sold for in 2020. When we multiply the quantities produced in 2021, by the prices that obtained in 2021, we get the GDP for that year. Those money amounts of GDP, measuring GDP in that way is called nominal GDP. But if we found a way to measure the actual quantities to add up the actual quantities of goods and services produced in each year, that would be real GDP. So nominal is to express a value in terms of money. Real is the value of the intrinsic service of the good or its equivalent in some other good or bundle of goods. With that distinction, we assert that it is real and not nominal values that matter for most decision making. Suppose that your lecturer says to you, you know, I have some research I need to get done and I need some research assistance on weekends. And I'm willing to pay you $50,000 to work for a few weekends assisting my research. And you have to decide whether you prefer to spend your weekends having your free time, having your leisure time, or if you want to forego leisure to be able to earn $50,000. That choice is not going to be made based on the nominal amount, 50,000. It is going to be made based on what can you do with $50,000. So for example, if $50,000 can buy a significant chunk of your degree, your tuition, then it's worth your while and you will forego having your weekends for leisure. But if at the time the offer is made, $50,000 can only buy you a tiny slice of your degree, of your education, then you're more likely to say it's not worth it. And you choose instead 
to value your free time at more than that. So it's the real equivalent of $50,000 that's going to affect your decision. Consider this apparent paradox. When you compare the prices of some of your favorite products to what they were 10 years ago, or when you were in elementary school, or when your parents were young, the price now is much higher than it was in previous years and keeps going up. If the price keeps going up, if it keeps getting more expensive, why is it the sales of these products don't keep falling? Why is it people are buying just about as much Pepsi now as they did five years ago and 10 years ago and 20 years ago? And the resolution to the apparent paradox is that it's only the nominal price that has been changing. If you looked at the real price of a bottle of Pepsi, that is to say, if you looked at the, at the price compared to the prices of all other goods and services, you might discover that the real price of Pepsi has hardly changed at all over all those years. The exchange rate provides another example. The exchange rate ha has increased considerably over the last several decades. And that means that in local currency, imported goods keep costing more and more. But that doesn't seem to have discouraged the consumption of imports. Why? Because again, it's only the nominal exchange rate that has gone up. And if you were to calculate what is the real exchange rate, the price of a US dollar relative to the prices of other commodities, you might find that the real exchange rate has hardly changed at all. It is the real price of consuming foreign goods that's going to determine whether people buy more or less of them. So in trying to understand how people respond to changing prices, pay attention to the change in the real, not the nominal price.